we'll try. Uh, let me erase my stuff. Da, 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 da. Nice. Okay. Let me. Where are you there? In plain sight. All right. So now that I erase my homework. Uh, well, first of all, welcome to last seven of the ESM discourse. Da da da. I uh, hope you're doing well. Um, hope you slept well. I don't know. And are energized and enthusiastic for this course. I didn't. Uh, here is where. Okay. So I need to hold it like this. I got a new mic, but it's not very handy positioning wise like this. So we'll see. All right. Um, we, last time, we talked about free time and telling time and the, the past simple. So, I hope you did your homework because we will discuss it. I mentioned last time that I wanted you to do exercise two as well of the, of lesson six. Let's use nothing. Cool, cool. So I hope you did that because I want to discuss that. Mm, do you want to discuss it now? Let's discuss that. That's the final thing for the homework, because I need to draw, and it's more annoying. Okay, so, opening aim, where you had to fill in the correct conjugation of the thing. Uh, let me grab a list of all of you who are here. So, participants, come on, teams. You can do it. Just ask, uh, Caitlin, could you do the first? Uh, yeah, tell me the first, the complete sentence of opening aim. Yes. Um, ah, yeah. I cannot hear you. That's probably a me problem. Can I, can anybody else hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you can hear Caitlin. That's good. <laughs> Let me try it like this. Mm -hmm. Almost. Can you hear me now? That's uh, my computer. Does not take kindly to me doing all this at the same time. If I settings, my uh, uh, speakers. Could you say something now, Kitten? Yeah, now I can hear you. Fantastic. Yes, how do you spell below blue? Perfect. Very good. Uh, could you try, uh, attempt a translation? Yes, um, pretty much. It, he promised that he uh, um, he promised her last year to come to her birthday party this time. 
Um, we see the word well here, which we'll treat, I think, in the next lesson or the one after that, which means it's kind of the opposite of not. So that means in English you do this with emphasis, like uh, this time he will go to her birthday party, but in Dutch we have a word for that, well. And deze keer means this time. Yeah, pretty good. You picked all the uh, important elements out of it. Great. All right, number two. Um, Sayu, would you attempt? Yeah. Yes, very good. You didn't fall for the trap. So you did you, you correctly use the present simple in the uh, next uh, second one and the past simple in the first one. Very good. And it is indeed the regende. Gisteren regende het pijpen stelen, maar vandaag schijnt de zon. Uh, which I will translate for you, meaning yesterday it rained cats and dogs. Pijpen stelen is the way you said it in Dutch. Uh, but today the sun is shining. Great. All right, three and four I will do because otherwise we'll never uh, it will take forever. Um, hij <laughs> naar huis toen het bier op was, and then the correct one is ging. Hij ging naar huis toen het bier op was. He went home when the beer was gone. And then four. Als kind <laughs> hij soldaat worden. Tegenwoordig <laughs> hij een brandweerman. Uh, and there should also be a worden after that. <laughs> because otherwise sense will be kind of funny. But uh, so it is als kind um, wilde hij soldaat worden. Oh no, wait. Dit is zijn, the next one. So that's fine. Uh, tegenwoordig is hij brandweerman. I thought it was a villain both times because and then it would. Uh, so now it says, as a child he wants to be a soldier. But, uh, or tegenwoordig meaning currently. He is a fireman. So maybe a uh, semicolon would be more appropriate. If it says wanted, it would kind of be weird. Uh, at the moment, he wants a fireman instead of wants to be a fireman. Which is also a valid desire. You can all relate, I guess. Uh, Gabriella, could you do five? I don't hear you. I feel like the sound is not me. Oh, yeah, I can hear you, but uh, very softly. I'll turn you, turn it up. All right, hit me. Yeah, I can hear you, but you, ha uh, if you speak loudly, then I think we can hear you. Very good. Z and I think you said was, right? Yeah, very good. So do you see that statue over there? Uh, that wasn't there yesterday. Very good. Uh, six, could, uh, Stefan, could you do that? Yes, very good. Veroverden. Yes. Yes, very good. Nice. Good job. All right, I'll do seven and eight. Um, Fritz, <laughs> zijn huis wordt, maar zijn <laughs> het vreselijk. Nu, wat is dat? Nu, <laughs> hij het. <laughs> Verver. So, Fritz verfde, painted, zijn huis zwart, maar zijn man vond het vreselijk. Nu, mm -hmm, hij zijn huis, nu moet hij het geel verven. 
So nu moet hij het geel verven. Zo, uh, in, in volle dus. Frits verfde zijn huis zwart, maar zijn man vond het vreselijk. You could also say vindt hier. Uh, I think that. Uh, but then it would be with a T. I think that makes sense. But his man, but his husband thinks it sucks. Uh, and uh, okay, so in full. Frits uh, mo- uh, verfde zijn huis zwart, maar zijn man vond het vreselijk. Nu moet hij het geel verven. So Frits painted his house black, but his husband thought it was awful. Now he has to paint it yellow. Oké, okay, acht. Mijn keel, <laughs> zie je, omdat ik gisteren de hele dag Nederlands <laughs> gesproken. So that would be, mijn keel doet zeer, of, ja. Uh, yeah. So my throat hurts. Uh, you could also say, mijn keel deed. Nah, you would probably say doet. It's probably about the present moment. And then, omdat ik gisteren de hele dag Nederlands heb gesproken. Or you could possibly say had gesproken. Uh, but if you do had, then you should say date here. So either both present or both past. Um, technically in the last sentence we use the present sim- present perfect. We haven't really had that yet. So if you did a mix of these, that's also okay. I think the only one you can't do is date, uh, no, doet and then had. You can do date and heb and date and had. That's fine. So, mijn keel doet zeer omdat ik gisteren de hele dag Nederlands heb gesproken. My throat hurts because I spoke Dutch uh, all day yesterday. Oop. Where's my... Oh, there's my eraser. Alright. Uh, nine. Aida. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very good. Afgelopen dinsdag. Uh, or did you have uh, with an N at the end or with that? Yes, indeed. Can you tr- give a translation? Yeah, afgelopen means past or last. Yeah, pretty close. Uh, they baked a cake together. Salmon means together. Uh, that is that's the the hint where with which you can know that you need to use the n. Uh, if it's otherwise, you could also do it without it. Uh, but you can't otherwise. But if you do that, then it doesn't make sense because then it says she bakes the ga- cake together, together with who. So it has to be an n. So good job. And then, uh, Sean, could you enlighten us? No? Oh, you can, yeah, cool. Yes. Ze raakten verdwaald, omdat ze te diep in het glasje, glaasje... Uh, mm, I, would, I would use hadden here, but that is pretty difficult to actually spot. So you would use the past perfect, because you're telling a story about the past. Um, but hebben, hebben also works. So you had, le- and you had, the, you had consistent n... Uh, the, the plural. Uh, here there isn't really a hint to know whether you need to use the plural or the singular, so if it is about she or they. Uh, so if you had uh, she uh, interpreted it as she um, and had no n all the time, that's also correct. Uh, but you do need to have it consistent, otherwise it's, uh, it's a bit difficult. Um, so this means they got lost, ze raakten verdwaald. Be- omdat ze te diep in het glaasje hadden gekeken. Because they looked too deep into the glass, which means they drank too much. It's the Dutch way of, uh, nah, it's not really like a, u- it's not even a euphemism. It's just a funny way of saying someone got a bit shit-faced. All right, for oefening 2, I will just give the answers pretty quickly and then 
tell the answers because uh, this is taking quite a bit. So the first would be vandaag. So you know it's present simple. Uh, uh, heeft hij een paar trui aan? The second, uh, I will say them all at the end and translate as well. Wij dronken gisteren een hele fles wijn. En gisteren ook. En morgen drinken we ook witte wijn. Ik heb rood haar. Or you could say had. It's not really uh, given a sentence. Wat objectief beter is dan blond haar. Of course. Uh, jullie ga, uh, gaven vorige week een feestje. Uh, you know, vorige week means past tense. Uh, en moeten nu 300 euro betalen. So now it says, it says nu in the sentence, meaning now, so we know it's a present simple, not a past simple. Um, and finally, ga je morgen mee naar mijn huis om huiswerk te maken? Uh, will you... Okay, I will translate in a bit. And then say that... Uh, zij speelden gisteren samen met hun broertjes, want ze mogen niet naar buiten. Uh, you could also maybe say mochten here, the past simple. Um, but since you're kind of describing the reason for something, you can just use the present simple. Uh, if it's still an ongoing state of affairs. And maybe the reason they can't go outside is because of the pandemic, that it's still an ongoing state of affairs. So you would use this. Otherwise, if you're just describing what's happening there, maybe they can't, couldn't go outside because they were grounded, then you could just use that one. All right. So, vandaag heeft hij een paarse trui aan. Uh, I'll do it slower. Vandaag heeft hij een paarse trui aan. Today he's wearing a purple sweater. Wij dronken eergisteren een fles witte wijn. En gisteren ook. En morgen drinken we ook witte wijn. Uh, we drank a bottle of white wine yesterday. Uh, the day before yesterday. And yesterday. And tomorrow we'll also drink a bottle of white wine. Ik heb rood haar. Wat objectief beter is dan blond haar. I have red hair, which is objectively better than blond hair. Jullie gaven vorige week een feestje en moeten nu 300 euro betalen. Ja, uh, yeah, that te over there. Oh, boete betalen. Ja, yeah, zo so there, boete betalen. So, you gave a party last week and now have to pay a 300 euro fine. Boete means fine. Uh, ga je morgen mee naar mijn huis om huiswerk te maken? Uh, will you come with me? Uh, or, uh, you come with me to my house to make homework tomorrow. Zij speelden gisteren met hun broertjes, want ze mogen niet naar buiten. Or, want ze mochten niet naar buiten. They played with their little brothers yesterday because they can't go outside. And otherwise, of course, you wouldn't play with your little brothers. Boring people. All right, so that was that. Um, the solution, I uh, hope you also did the dark search. Very important, very difficult. Um, if you didn't get it, the dog is like somewhere in the middle on the diagonal. All right. Um, oh no, I can't see that either. Well, hope you found it. Because I can't uh, show it to you now. All right, then I want to quickly go through Oefening 2. Because we did not yet do so. Oh, oefening, Oefening. And again, if you have any questions, please feel free to interrupt me. So, the exercise here was to, you have Sanna's agenda, Sanna's calendar. Um, and you have a description of what Sanna is doing during the week. And the goal is, fill out the calendar as it is written here. So you have Monday, Tuesday, when, okay, Thursday, 
Friday and the weekend. So, um, I will just fill it in and you can check because otherwise I think it's. Uh, now you know what? I don't think this is a very fun exercise to check. I will do this. I will write this up in the break so you can check. Uh, it is mostly just understanding what it is and writing it down. I don't think it's that fruitful to go through it completely. But if you do have questions, please let me know. If not, well, uh, I'll give you some time to think of questions if you, you have them. Oh yeah, uh, because I'm doing this, I can't really take a look at the, the chat or hands. So if you have a question, please just unmute yourself and tell me, because I can't check. All right, then we finally move on to the actual lesson. The at word van de week, the word of the week, this time is bank hangen. Bank hangen. Mm -hmm. Bank hangen means to hang around on a couch. A bank is a couch, and hangen means to hang. Being a couch potato, which we're all guilty of here, definitely. I'm not doing that only one, please. Um, and it is also relevant to what we were going to talk about today, which is the theme. Shit. Okay. That will be annoying. Uh, the theme of this week is thuis. Uh, so we're going to learn words that have to know things you find around your home and how to describe situations you see around, around you every day, but mostly around your home, because those are the words we'll learn. So, um, to start with, normally you have more than one thing around you at any given moment. I know, shocking. But we haven't really learned how to describe more than one thing in Dutch. So let's remedy that horrible problem. Uh, so we'll learn how to make the plural in Dutch, meervoud. Which is the opposite of het enkelvoud, which is the singular. So, the plural in Dutch can, so you have this nice table, or table, yeah, table, in your booklet, and it might look a bit annoying. Uh, rest assured, reality is even more annoying, there's even more rules that aren't on there, and this is just a pretty, like, 95% correct guide, and that's all you need. Um, and it might look a bit complicated, especially the plus s, but they are kind of simple. In general, almost all Dutch verbs, uh, nouns, sorry, become plural by just adding en to them. So, you have a, ver a word, say, looking at something around me, pen, I'm holding a pen, and then you add en to it. But of course, we have to take in mind the Dutch spelling rules, and if we had this, uh, pen is pronounced as pen, you know, with uh, this sound. But if we just combine these, they would sound like pain in, with this sound. And that doesn't sound the same, so in order to pre preserve that, what, we do, what do we do? We add another N. So, pen in. Cool. It's kind of the opposite of what you do when you make the stem, right? If, we, if this was a verb, and we would cut away the, the en, we were left with two n's, we don't like that, we get rid of that, we have pen. But now we do, we do the opposite, we add the n, and we have to take that into account. Cool! So, this is the most common one, so if you don't know, just try that. Um, but there are some other cases that deserve your attention. Uh, let's start with the rarest uh, first. The rarest is the plus e-r-e-n ending. And this happens with only like 10 words, but there are a few of them, a few of those words you do see quite often. The most common is the word egg. Ei. It's a nice egg. You know, these things. No, that's not a really good egg, but whatever. Uh, to make it plural, you just add E-R-E-N at the end. Eieren. Eieren. Eggs. Cool. Another example, uh, the other most common example is the word kind, which means child. Het kind. And the plural is de kinderen. 
the children, just like in English, you know. And the others are the ones listed there, runderen and uh, runderen and kalveren, which are lambs and hmm, what's the English word for this? Like cows, but then a bit general or cattle. That's the word. Uh, and and lambs, but not sheep for so, for some reason. Only lambs, only little boys. So you have lammeren. It's definitely a word you see a lot. No. Uh, and then the other, the final one is kind of common, blood, which means uh, leaf. And then the plural is bladeren. And if you're very astute, you've noticed, oh Thomas, you said the sound doesn't change. The sound just changed. What? Um, and indeed, the sound changes here. This is one of the few cases where we don't give a shit because we really like this ending and we don't want to make it bladeren for some reason. Even though we do make it lammeren. Bladeren. Leaves. And so, for instance, a, a, a tree is a bone. Multiple trees are bowmen. Wow. You're doing very well. Alright, then the final case is are the ones with S. And so there are two. The first one is pretty simple. Namely, uh, when you make a plural that ends on a on a vowel, say the word auto, meaning car, if you want to make that plural, um, we want to write, uh, we want to add an S because I don't know why we want to add an S here. Uh, be I think because autoin, we get that awkward boy and we don't want that, so we just want to add an S. Easy. But if we do this, then it sounds as autos, and that sounds different, and we don't like that. So what we normally would do, I guess, if we were to apply our rules very consistently, we would make it autos with these double O's. We also don't really like that. That looks kind of ugly for some reason. So what we do instead <laughs> is just add an apostrophe to kind of signify uh, there should be an O there, but we are too lazy to write it. So there's just an apostrophe. So this looks like, in English, looks like it says of the car, but in Dutch this, mean, this means cars. That's very confusing. And a lot of Dutch people mess that up in English as well. So they write, uh, uh, they did not often, but uh, you can sometimes see this, because in Dutch that makes sense. Um, and yeah, also interesting is that the possessive in Dutch works the opposite. It works the opposite way as in English, like this. So if you want to say, no, auto is not a good idea, but um, like um, a name, like Joop. Joop is like a Dutch name. And if you want to say Joop's uh, car or Joop's cars, so in English you would write that as this, Joop's cars, right? Apostrophe S, uh -huh. and in Dutch, but in Dutch you would write this, Joop's autos. So we don't do an apostrophe for the possessive, we only do it for plurals. Very confusing, you'll probably mess it up, I mess it up all the time in English, so don't feel bad. Unless you are more familiar with another language that also does this, then it makes sense. Okay, so it is just really, um, and that this applies for every single vowel at the end of a word, uh, except for the E, because you don't, uh, that sounds different, this sounds like an, oh can I draw that? Uh, yeah, like a schwa, so it sounds like e uh, instead of a. And you have words that end on a, uh, but that you write those with two, like z, c. Um, but to make those plural, you don't add an s, you do add en, and then you get this weird, weird guy again, zeen, c. Cool. All right. So that's. Um, Second rule, and then finally the last rule is when you, when you do just add an S. Um, that is the case for all these cases, so worse than on E. So the word visi, vision, visis, or more common taxi. No, that's a, that's a bad example. I'm not going to write taxi because it doesn't end on EI. Um, there are, uh, IE, sorry, 
there aren't that many words that end on IE. So this is not a very common case. What is a common case is words ending on EL, EL, I don't know, ER, ERD, uh, just single E, just E and, and something else, basically. So for instance, the most common here is spoon, which in Dutch is lepel, lepel. And the plural spoon is then labels, spoons. Or as we saw before, the word boete, which means fine. And the plural of that becomes boetes, fines. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, and the final case is when the word is a foreign word for Dutch. Uh, and you add, uh, and in that language, you also add an en, uh, an s. I'm sorry. This is kind of difficult to enforce, especially for English words, because a lot of English words get Dutchified so much that they're not foreign anymore. For example, like the word baby. This is also the Dutch word for baby. This is just the Dutch word for baby, and so you don't add an s to the end. Uh, like you would in, oh, that's not, that's what you would do in English, but this, you would, in English you would write it as this. But in Dutch, we just, it's just such a Dutch word that we just pluralize it as a Dutch word. So this is the plural, babies. Looks like shit, but no, it's unfortunate. Also the word hobby. So one hobby, two hobbies, not IES. Uh, but what is, is an example is, for example, the word Pardon my French, croissant, croissants, credit cards, credit cards, tram, trams, yes. This is kind of difficult because it needs you, uh, it requires you to identify the, the language of origin, so don't worry about it too much. Just add en if you don't know, that is more often the case. Uh, final, final note. Um, oh yeah, plurals are always the, we covered that. And in an indefinite form, you don't use uh, a, an article uh, for the plural. So we have uh, het board, that whiteboard, de borden, een board. No funny business in like in French with the lay. Just no article. All right. So those are plurals. Uh, what I will have you do now is exercise one, where you have to identify the correct plural. Um, or no, yeah, in the singular is in brackets. I'll have you uh, have five minutes for that, and in the meantime, you can ask questions about this if you if you can. All right, uh, yes, good luck.
let's discuss, because this is not such a super important exercise. Um, Panishata, could you do give me the four, first four answers and read the phrase out loud? Mm -hmm. Which one is it? The second one, yes, very good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yes, very good. Great. So, a, a tafel met vier poten, a table with four legs, two, a bank met five cushions, a couch with five pillows, three, two, twee planken, two planks or shelves, and four, drie vazen, three phases, like, I think you put flowers in, faces, yes, I don't know. All right, very good. Um, Simona, could you give me the last, the other four, if you have them? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is the bureaus. It is indeed a bit, a bit cheeky, uh, because if, I'm not sure if in French you do it with an S or an X, because we often they do it with an X, but or that can also be an S, whatever. Um, if it maybe a good rule of thumb is just if it's foreign, then you use an S instead of if it takes an S. Very good. Yes, very good. Yeah, it is, it is, well, do you think it's with two Ds or with one? Yes, very good. Otherwise it would be Baden. Great. And then the last one? Yes, indeed. Both because it ends on an ER and it is a wrong word. Very good. Great. Okay, yeah, so it is uh, negen bureaus, uh, nine desks, uh, duizend scherven, a thousand shards or pieces, seven uh, veel bedden, a lot of beds, and acht is twenty computers, twenty computers. Computer. So you just like, try to be very Dutch about it. Computer. Um, and also, this doesn't end on ERD or ELD or E whatever, um, but it is also kind of different in that uh, did, did, uh, these ERD, I didn't mention that ERD, ELD, whatever, endings are all unemphasized. So you can hear that if you pronounce them sort of, or you hear me pronounce it, kussen, um, uh, lepel, keuken, wekker, so they all sound like uh, and this sounds like eh, bed. And not but it's bedden uh, because it, if it, it sounds like an uh, then it sounds like this sound, uh, and then you get bedden, and then it sounds just like you're kind of mumbling, and we don't want that, of course. Let's well, speak clearly. All right, very good, good job. Then now we will have a break for ten minutes until yeah, the flower. Then uh, we will talk about the prepositions of place and how to describe settings and I need to figure out how we do exercise 3 um, I think maybe we can just do that together yeah okay good luck uh, or good luck have a good break and see you in a bit
And in the meantime, I will write down the answers of uh, exercise two of last time. And if you have any questions, of course, please interrupt.
With spelling foul? Ah, yeah, so why that happens? Um, it's basically the reverse application of what we saw with the, um, the spelling rules for the um, vowel, uh, for the for the verbs. So for a verb, if it has a V in the middle and we chop off the EN, then for the stem we get um, an F. So, for instance, durven, meaning to dare, um, you chop off the EN. Um, I can. Yeah, so you 
of Durven, we would chop off this, and then the stem would become this, right? Because we don't like a V at the end. Uh, but the opposite is also true. We really like to have a V in the middle in Dutch, or at the start of words instead of Fs. So uh, from Scherf, we add an EN. We don't really like this. We don't like an F and an EN. We would much prefer a V and an EN. So that's uh, why it becomes like that. Good question, because I did indeed not explain that. All right, so welcome back everyone. Um, we'll quickly go over the Duolingo, which was a bit late, so if you didn't get around to it, forgive you for this time. Um, the single past was completed by Aida, Panajata, and Rosita. Good job. And the time, and it was not someone else, wait. Uh, was completed by Faith Rose, Panajota and Rosita. Rosita. Good job. Someone else did the other one as well. Did not scroll that far enough. And Stefan, you also did it. Good job. Okay, I won't go over the top because that's too much effort. Um, slight change of plans because we did have another extra, like I had a, a good exercise schedule, it's, it's exercise three. Um, but for some reason I'm not able to create breakout rooms and I think kicking everyone out of the meeting and then putting them in won't go super smoothly. Luckily next week we have some spare time so we can just do that then. I think it's a good exercise we should do it but uh, I will skip it for now um, which is fine because then we might actually be able to finish on time for once. Can you imagine that? All right, um, this, these are the answers for exercise two of last week. Check them if you agree with them. So on Monday, Sana is working, we already know that. Then in the morning, in the afternoon, she's doing yoga. And then at eight, she's going to the cinema, the bioscope. Then on Tuesday, she's working again. At quarter past 12, quarter over two, uh, quarter past two, I'm sorry. She's going to the doctor uh, at a quarter past eight, she is going for a walk, again Wednesday working, uh, in the morning, and then on 10 for half 3, 20 over 2, she's going to have lunch, and in the avond she's going to have a borrel, a drink, um, like a drink with people, not just, ah, you can also refer to it as just having a drink. Um, again, working, 8 to 12, then at 7 she's playing tennis, and on Friday she's off, which is vrij. And in the morning she's going to drink coffee with um, Sarah. And in the afternoon she's going to do vrijwilligerswerk. She's volunteering. And at, on Saturday she's off. So she at uh, ha half past eight, half negen, she's going to see Hans and Mieke. And on Zondag she's going to Nix. She, she's going to Nixon. She's going to do nothing. So it's a nice verb in Dutch. Nixon um, is nothing. Meaning to do nothing. Which is very important. Yes. Yes. You are completely right. It is indeed kwart voorracht and kwart overracht. I want to uh, pretend. I want to pretend that I put it in there to see if someone noticed, but that's not the case. I just missed that. Good job. Okay. Any other questions? Oh, that's a good idea. Really. All right. I will do it at medium speed though, because otherwise it will take uh, a long time. Sanne heeft deze week een drukke week. Ze moet maandag maandagochtend werken. Van 8 uur tot 12 uur. In de middag gaat ze naar yoga en s'avonds om 8 uur gaat ze naar de bioscoop met Linda. Op dinsdag moet Sanne weer in de ochtend werken. Zij heeft om kwart over twee een afspraak bij de dokter. Om kwart voor acht s'avonds gaat Sanne wandelen. Op woensdag en donderdag moet Sanne ook werken van 8 uur tot 12 uur s ochtends. 
Woensdagmiddag gaat zij lunchen met Hanny om tien voor half drie. In de avond gaat zij borrelen met collega's. De volgende dag gaat zij om zeven uur avonds tennissen. Vrijdag is Sanne vrij. S ochtends gaat ze koffie drinken met Sarah en smiddags doet ze vrijwilligerswerk. Op zaterdag ziet Sanne haar vrienden Hans en Mieke om half negen s'avonds. En finally, op zondag mag Sanne lekker niksen. No problem. Thanks for asking. Alright, that was that. Let us then move on to the second part, which is describing things in space. Wow, such a dramatic skill you are soon to learn. So, uh, sometimes it is nice to describe how things are oriented. Maybe you're describing how your room looks, or you are describing a certain composition, I will tell you, for a certain exercise. Very useful skill to have. But in general, it's nice to know what, how you describe relationships between other things. So, just to get right into it, I don't have good justification for this, but prepositions can be very useful. Um, in your booklet, you have a nice graphic demonstrating all the prepositions. Uh, so we have, none, they're not all the prepositions, and these are all the only prepositions of place. So they describe relationships between nouns in spatially. You also have prepositions of time, such as later or in a bit, you know, those things. Um, but we are just concerned with spatial prepositions. So very, the most common one we have op, which means on, boven of over, which means above, uh, for, which means in front of, tussen, which means in between, um, rechts onderin, this is meant to be kind of a compound thing, to just uh, rechts means right, and onderin means at the bottom, you can combine them get rechts onderin. Uh, you can't combine everything like this. Uh, for example, rechts tussen doesn't really make any sense. Right in between uh, or left in between. But you can say rechts boven, like that we will see that in a bit. Uh, then I think the most useful one of them all, naast, next to or besides, uh, onder, meaning under, Behind, meaning achter, oh sorry, all the way around, achter, meaning behind, and then uh, in, meaning in, and uh, links, links bovenin. So, in the left hand corner. Cool. Now, I hear you say, Thomas, very, very cool. Those are nice words I've learned, but how do I use them? Well, dear student, I will tell you. Uh, in Dutch, we have a few words that we most often use to describe these kinds of situations. Uh, and they're also used for something else, which I will touch upon later. Uh, but most of the time they're used to describe how things are related to each other. Um, so the most common word you use in this context is staan. These are some... Uh, also some uh, auxiliary verbs. We already saw some auxiliary verbs such as moeten, vinden, etc. Um, and now we see see more, uh, but these are a bit more straightforward. Stan means to stand. Uh, I'll just first list them. Then we have liggen, which means to lie. Zitten which means to sit. Zijn. This is kind of an ambiguous one, which means to be, of course, you know. And then hangen, which means to hang. And with these words, you can describe almost any, anything. So the most common one, again, staan. Um, if I'm looking at my desk, I have a desk here, and a chair that's standing next to it or in front of it. I can say, the stool staat voor het bureau. The chair is standing in front of the desk. The stool 
staat voor het bureau. The chair is standing in front of the desk. Now, depending on what orientation this chair has with respect to the desk, you will change either the verb or and or the preposition. So if I put my chair on top of the desk, then the stool staat op het bureau. If I am really angry and just ram it right through it, maybe I can say it staat in het bureau. Uh, that will require some force. Most probably it will end up onder het bureau, underneath the desk. But this all kind of implies with this word that the chair is in kind of a standing position. If I, instead of standing, standing it upright on top of my desk, I just kind of nudge it on its side, then you would say the stool ligt op het bureau. The chair is lying on top of the desk. Um, and so liggen is mostly for yeah, things that are like this on top of things. Standing is for things that are like this on top of things. Sitting is for things that are like kind of generally the same sh size or shape as the thing that they are having a relation to. Zijn as well. And then hangen is of course just hanging. Um, for a chair, it would be kind of hard to find a situation where you would have it sitting because it's not really the same size as uh, other things. But maybe if it is sitting inside of a, yeah, usually sitting is a combination with in. You don't really say something is standing in or lying in. You say something is sitting in. Uh, a drawer, for instance, you know, find, putting a chair in a drawer may be challenging, but that is kind of situation. Um, carpets are, for instance, mostly lying because they're like flat. So you would say, het tapijt ligt op de vloer. Vloer. The carpet is laying on the floor. Um, yes. Hmm. I don't have a very thorough explanation of this. Um, it is good to know in which case you would use stand, in which case you would use liggen, uh, etc., etc. And of course, to know the prepositions. But uh, these are kind of similar to how you would use them in English. This is kind of the only different one, and this maybe. And the prepositions are also kind of the same as you would use them in English. So I think you are kind of familiar with it. The only thing that is useful to know, uh, extra, is that you can describe things definitely and indefinitely here in Dutch. So you could say the chair is standing on top of the desk, but then you sound like you are making a sentence to put in a Dutch book. Uh, that's not really how you talk. Right, you don't. Uh, uh, if someone is us in, is in another room, and it's like, ah, where's the chair? You don't say the chair is on top of the desk. No, you say, uh, or if someone uh, more like, what if someone is asking, like, ah, what's uh, what what is in that room? I can't uh, I can't remember, and you don't know what they're asking for. So you could say, ah, yeah, there's a a chair and a, a whiteboard and some plants. And if you want to say something like that, you would use this construction. Er, well, like, uh, er hangt een whiteboard aan de muur. So there is a whiteboard hanging on the wall. This word means approximately, uh, squeal, there. It means a lot of other things. But here in this situation you use this because in Dutch you can't say or you wouldn't really say a whiteboard whiteboard hangt aan de muur. 
we don't like sentences that start with something kind of indefinite. So a whiteboard hanging on the wall that would work in English, but in Dutch that sounds kind of weird. Um, but this is kind of advanced, so we won't go over that a lot. Just now, er hangt a whiteboard on the muur, is the way you would say that. Now, on to some quick, quick tests. Um, let's see. Say, I have here a, a wall, and in front of it, uh, here there's a, there's a closet. Beautiful. Uh, and, it's, and, and here there's a, a nice space with flowers. Uh, and there's a picture hanging here. Could you... Um, okay, I'm gonna ask someone. Um, Cosita. Could you describe to me where this closet is being? The closet, uh, where this, how, how, where this closet is, in respect to the other things? Could you describe the situation to me, basically? It is cast, the cast. You could say that, uh, but then it would so more sound like it is kind of lying there or is as big as the floor, but it is more like this situation. So which verb would you use there? Mm -hmm. Fluid. Uh, now, well, which one of these uh, you can see in your booklet? You have all these nice adverbs. Which one would be close? Uh, yeah, close. So that's a word you haven't noticed, uh, learned. So that's uh, close. Is yeah. And could you just write it down, but then in the from the perspective of the vase? Mm -hmm. Oh, you're doing very well. No, you do very well. Nast. Uh, yeah. Plant. The plant. Yeah. Yes, on the, uh, yeah, the cast. Staat op de vloer. I have it here. And. Nast the plant. You could, you could leave this out. Very good. Um, to do a difficult scenario, yeah, maybe here. Um, I'm just gonna make it weird. Make it weird. So here we have a desk, and on top of the desk we have a. Uh, Here and then on the couch you have some pillows. Beautiful. Um, let's see. Oh, someone sent something. I can see. Uh, Kutika, could you describe this situation to me? 
Let's bring this one. Mm -hmm. And on the couch there's pillows. Yeah, but you can you, you can make it you make it make it multiple sentences. Sofa or in bunk, boven or op het bureau. Some people say make it one word and say boven op. Cousins. Cousins. and cousins up the bunk on the sofa or live in that would also work here people use that word a lot very good nice so what we just did i would like you to do on exercise two uh but in there you are already given the the words you just have to find the correct verb to use um and please write it down both in the kind of the active case and in the passive case like er staat een en er ligt een en uh, de monitor staat op het bureau en er staat een monitor op het bureau both of these
hope it went well. Mm. Let's see. Caitlin, could you give me the answer for the first one? Oh, could you give me the uh, answer for the first one? Yes, very good. The label left on the table, uh, or there left the label on the table. Very good. Two. Mm. So five. Yes, perfect. The cast starts for the mirror, or F start and cast for the mirror. Very good. In front of the wall. Three. Um, Bethany. Give it your best shot. Oh no, the, the one after that, sorry. <laughs> no worries. It's a it's a trash can. It could be Zijn, it could also be Zitten. Um, you could also say Liggen, and people use that kind of these two often sort of interchangeably. Um, well, interchangeably like this. Like for Zitten, you can almost always use Liggen, but the other way around, you can't. Uh, so you can't say that the pijt sit op de vloer, the carpet is sitting on the floor. Um, then four, Panishotta. Um, Yes, indeed. Yeah, you can't really use any, any of the any others uh, except for oh, yes, sorry, uh, Zitten could also be, be used. Fine, great. And then finally, het tapijt tussen en planten. Um, Stefan. Very good, great job. All right, cool. Um, then that was it approximately for this lesson. Uh, we still have the Kahoot, so for those who want to stay around for that, feel free. For those who need to go, thanks for being here. Um, hope you learned something. Sorry that it was a kind of a, a bit of a luxury class. I haven't eaten that much, so that's the other students is a bit luxury. Next week, that is important for those who are leaving. Uh, so please do your homework. And try to, next week is kind of the recap lesson. So try to think of things that you might like to have explained again or that you didn't really get, or maybe some things that maybe you would like to have explain, uh, like explained in more detail or um, just something that didn't come up yet and you would like to know if that will come up or whether it won't or you just want to know something. Please feel free to uh, prepare as many questions as you want. Uh, I will go through some things on my own, but uh, it's always better to have that guided a bit by you. Okay, so cool. Thanks for joining. And then I will turn off the recording. Because
Stormtrooper. And for those who want to stick around, there is, of course, the Kahoot. <laughs>